Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a network and security engineer at VMware. This is the second video of the series Security at Your Service. On the first one we have already seen an introduction to the NSI security model and the distributed firewall with some sample use cases. On this video we will focus on applying micro-segmentation inside one single data center. On the third video we will see how to extend that micro-segmentation concept across data centers and how policies keep being enforced while VMs move from one data center to the other. Video number four we will see how to leverage automation tools to deploy network and security and the benefits from that. And finally on video number five we will see a bit of monitoring tools and visibility you get with NSX. So let's focus on the topic for today, micro segmentation inside a single data center. This is the topology we are using in the lab. On the left hand side we have two ESXi servers which represent data center one, on top of which we have one vCenter, one NSX manager, all other NSX control plane components, one active directory, and then some operations and visibility tools, the realized operations and the realized login site. On the right there is another ESXi host which represents data center two on top of which we are running another vCenter, another NSX manager and the corresponding NSX control plane components. You can see all three ESXi hosts are connected to the same IP management subnet. This is just for simplicity in the lab. Of course in a real environment you would have different IP subnets on each data center but the results are exactly the same. Either you use the same IP management subnet or you use different ones. We will use four VMs during the tests two web VMs and two app VMs. You have them on the screen, so VMs whose name finish on O1 are located on ESX1, while VMs whose name finish in O2 are located on ESXi2. Also, those VMs with appendix dash 80 have a web server listening on port 80, while VMs with appendix dash 8080 have a web server listening on port 8080. If we look at the logical view, on the top part of the screen we have a green router, this is the NSX Edge, which is the one that integrates the NSX environment with the existing environment. It's something like the demarcation point between worlds. Below the NSX edge there is the distributed logical router. This is the component that, run, that runs in kernel on each ESXi host server and it's the default gateway for each IP subnet created with NSX. In our case we have two IP subnets, the web tier which has IP addressing 172.16.10.0 on which there are two VMs with IP addresses .11 and .12. We have also an app tier with IP address in 172.16.20.0 24 and again there are two VMs with IP address in .11 and .12. What we are going to see first is that we have full connectivity between these four VMs. Then we will change the behavior of the, the firewall default rule from allow to block and we will see that effectively we will block all connectivity between VMs, also inside each IP subnet. Then we will start playing with NSX security groups. We will use a web servers group and a, an app servers group with some rules defined between them. So from web to web we will allow anything, from web to app we will allow only SSH and HTTP on port 8080 and inside the app tier we will only allow ICMP. And we will see how we can add VMs to these groups independently from infrastructure, independently from their IP addressing, their location, etc. Finally, we will take that a step further. We will move the app 2 VM to the web servers group and we will see how the security policies are automatically changed. The app 2 VM will be able to talk anything with the web VMs, but on the contrary, it will only be able to talk SSH and HTTP 8080 with the other VM that is on its own IP subnet. So we will enforce more security inside one IP subnet than across IP subnet, which is the opposite to what happens in traditional security environments where policies are only enforced when traffic goes from one IP subnet to the other IP subnet. And this provides an idea of how powerful the NSX security model is. With all this said, let's move to the real demo. The first we are going to do is to review the environment to confirm that what we are going to use in the lab is what we have already presented in the slides. So let's browse through the NSX console. First we will check the installation tab. Here we can see the NSX managers. We have two, one for data center one, one for data center two. And then also we have the NSX controllers. We have one which is registered against both NSX managers. On the host preparation tab we can see that for the clustering data center one all the kernel components have already been installed and enabled. 
which is a very simple task because in the same way that now we are offered an uninstall option, we would have been offered an installation option at deployment time. Next thing to check is the logical network preparation tab. Here we can see the IP addresses that are assigned to each ESXi host as part of the installation of NSX. These IP addresses are the VXLAN tunnel endpoints which are responsible for encapsulating traffic inside VXLAN headers. And this is the reason why we can create as many networks with NSX as we want without the need to reconfigure any physical device on the underlying network. Let's now move to the logical switches section where we can see all the networks that have already been created with NSX. There are two kinds of networks the ones spanning data center one and the ones that we call universal which are the ones spanning across data centers. This is something that we will see on video three. For now we will focus on the networks on data center one. And we are going to create a new network to see how easy it is. So we give it a descriptive name and we map it to the scope we want, in this case data center one. And only with that we have one layer two network that has just been created across all the servers in our data center one without the need to reconfigure anything in the underlying network. We now move to the NSX Edges tab, which is where the routers are. So here we have two kinds of routers, the NSX Edge, which is the one that integrates the NSX wall with the existing wall in the data center, and the distributed logical router, which is the one that is the component running in the kernel of all of the ESXi hosts. And also this is the one that is the default gateway for all the networks that have been created with NSX. There is a third type, the universal distributed router, this is the one that spans across data centers and is the one that we will see on video number three. For now we will focus in the DLR on data center one and if we edit, double click on it, we can see its interfaces. So as we said, it's the default gateway for the web tier and for the app tier. There are some conf routing configuration, in this case only a default gateway to the NSX Edge. If we go back and check the NSX Edge configuration, we can see it has multiple interfaces also. There is an uplink to the external networks, there is a downlink to the uh, DLR on data center one and another downlink to the universal DLR. Also on its routing tab we can see there are several static routes that allow the edge to reach the different VM subnets. So now let's start reviewing the security configuration. First we are checking the service composer section, here is where we define the NSX security groups. We have two, the app service group and the web service group, both of which are empty initially. Let's review its config. Let's go and edit the app server security group. Here we can see uh, the criteria for VMs to belong to this group, which is very simple. They just need to have assigned a security tag named st-app. We could have used many other criteria. We will go through them. You can see we can use any object from vCenter, which makes security very easy to apply, but in our case we are just using security tags. Something similar happens with the web service group. We are using a different tag, st hash web. We will see it later during the demos. For now, let's move to the firewall tab. Here you can see there are already some rules configured. We will use them, but for now they are disabled. You can see the gray buttons on the left. And we can see how the default rule in NSX is initially set to allow all traffic. This is one of the reasons why the deployment of NSX is non-disruptive. So we are now ready to move to the first use case. So we are going to see how the communication between our four VMs is fully permitted. Let's first have a look at the VMs itself. So we have the web 01 hash 80 server with an IP address of 172.16.10.11, which is hosted on ESXi1 and connected to the DC1 web network. Web02 has an IP address of 172.16.10.12, is hosted on ESXi2 and is connected to the same web network. Apple one has a different IP subnet, 172.16.20.11 is hosted on ESXi1 and is connected to a different network, DC1 app. Apple two has a 172.16.20.12 IP address, is mapped to the same DC1 app network and is hosted on ESXi2. Let's now launch the console for Web01 and Apple two, which are the VMs that we are going to use to run the tests. Here we have the console for Web01 and we'll do the same for the app 02. Launch remote console, here it is, and we will move it to the right of the screen. So on the left we have the web 01 VM, on the right we have the app 02 VM. We issue an ifconfig command to check the IP address, which is what it should be, and we try to ping the other web VM. It works, and we are now pinging app 01, which works, and app 02, which works too. So let's move to the browser. 
we try to reach web 01 bm on port 8080 sorry for the typo it works up 01 bm on port 80 it works and up 02 bm on port 8080 also works so everything works as expected so far so let's let's move to the app VM to run similar tests. So first we check its IP address is what it should be. We try to ping the other VM on the app subnet. It works, and we are trying to ping Web VM one, which also works, and then Web VM two, which works too. So everything working as expected so far. So we will do the same, and we'll now move to the browser. We will try to reach the Web VM one. It works. Web VM2 on port 8080 it works and app VM1 on port 80 also works. So far so good we have full connectivity between our four VMs. So let's move into the second use case. We will change the behavior of the default rule from allow to block and we will see that effectively it drops all traffic between our four VMs. We first check the IP address on app 02 and we issue a ping to the other app VM. It works, we keep it running in the background. The same for the web VM. Check its IP address and we issue a ping to the other web VM and it works. We keep it running again. So let's not go to the firewall console and we change the behavior from allow to reject. This is because the VMs we are using for the tests are Linux based VMs that I have built myself and since I'm not an expert on Linux, I didn't manage to set properly the time my timeout timers. So in case we use block it would take too long to wait for the failure and for the sake of time it's better to use reject. Though in most production deployments people use block. So once the configuration is changed we click on publish so that the rules are applied effectively and as we can see pings start to fail. So we are applying micro segmentation in the most simple way. We are blocking all traffic even inside the same IP subnet. Let's refresh the browser sessions we had open before they work and now we can see the three of them fail. So the web VM is isolated. Let's do the same on the app VM. Refresh the three browser sessions and we can see the three of them fail. So effectively our four VMs are completely isolated as expected after changing the behavior of the default rule from allow to block. So let's start playing with NSX security groups. We are going to enable the three rules related to the web and app servers then we will add VMs to those groups, so we will start seeing how from web to web everything will be allowed now, from web to app only SSH and HTTP on 8080, and from app to app only ICMP. So we will change the policies again without modifying any IP setting or any uh, network connectivity. We start with our web VM, we check its IP address, and we issue a continuous pin to the other web VM. So far it fails because of the default rule blocking all traffic. The same on the app VM, we check its IP address and launch a pin to the other app VM, which also fails. So let's go to the firewall tab on NSX and enable three of the existing rules by clicking on the grey icon. As you can see, these are the rules that allow anything from web to web, that allow only HTTP 8080 and SSH from web to app, and that allow only ICMP between app servers. We click on publish so that the rules get effectively applied. We wait for a few seconds and once the publishing is done, let's go and see the effect on the VMs. But something must be wrong because both pings keep failing while all communication between web VMs is allowed and ICMP between app VMs is also allowed. So let's go back to the firewall and here we can see that despite the rules are enabled, the groups are empty. So unless we put VMs on these groups, nothing will happen. So we need to solve that. And for that we go into the NSX Manager section where we can assign tags to VMs. So here we select the ST web tag and we will assign our two web VMs. And as soon as we hit OK we will see that the ping now works. The ping between web VMs works. This is because now both web VMs belong to the group. And because they belong to the group the policy is being enforced. Web to web allow anything. So here we can see both VMs belong to the group but the group for app is still empty. So we go to the security tags section. We map our app tag with our app VMs. And again once we hit OK the ping between app VMs starts working. This is because now both app VMs belong to the app group and because of that the right policy is being enforced. We can check it back in the firewall. We can see here that we have two members in the group. Let's go and review the rest of the policies. From web to web anything is allowed. From app to app only ICMP. From web to app HTTP 8080 and SSH. So from our web VM we try to ping app 
O1 and it fails, we try to ping up O2 and it fails, but SSH works. So we can reach up O1 and actually we see the prompt changing, we see the IP address is different now until we exit the SSH session. Let's go back to the browser and refresh the three sessions that were already failing. So now we can read the second web server. Communication to the first app server fails, but to the second works. This is because only HTTP on 8080 is allowed between web and app servers. Let's move to the app O2BM on the right. Here we can see the ping to app 01 works as expected because ICMP is enabled, but we cannot ping web 1 nor web 2. And also SSH sessions to web 1 and web 2 fail as expected. Let's go back to the browser and refresh the three sessions and we will see how the three of them fail because for an app VM only ICMP to the other app VM is allowed and all other communications are being blocked. So we have just seen a second level of micro segmentation. Before we were, we were blocking all traffic between our four VMs, now we have different settings for different tiers. The web servers can talk anything to the other web servers, the app servers can only talk ICMP to the other app servers. And let's move to the final test of this video. Now we will see how to change the policies that apply to app O2 VM by simply moving it from one group to the other without changing any IP addressing or any network related setting. Let's go back to the console of our app O2 VM, let's check its IP address again and issue a ping to the first of the web servers, which we will see it fails because the policies do not allow communication between app servers to web servers. Back to the NSX firewall, we can see only web servers belong to the web servers group and only app servers belong to the app servers group and also that the default rule keeps rejecting all traffic. What we are going next is modifying the security tags on the app O2 VM so that it, it belongs to the web servers instead of the app servers. And we can do it from the summary page of the VM itself. So here we can see a section for security tags. We refresh the GUI to get the most current information and we can see the VM belongs to the app service group because it has assigned the app tag. So we will change that. We are going to assign the web tag instead. And after we hit OK, we can see how the ping from app 02 to web 01 starts working. This is because now the app 02 VM belongs not to the app group but to the web service group. So we have effectively changed the policies that apply to this VM without modifying any IP setting or any network configuration. Let's refresh the web browser sessions on the app O2 VM. Now it can reach web 1, web 2, but not app 1 on port 80 because it's been blocked by the firewall. Also, it cannot even ping the other VM on its IP subnet. While SSH does work, this is because SSH is allowed from web servers to app servers and now our app O2 VM is behaving like a web server. This is one of the demos that shows the power of NSX. We are allowing more communication across subnets. App02 can talk anything to the web servers that are inside one IP subnet because App02 can only talk SSH and HTTP on port 8080 to App01, which is another VM on the same IP subnet. And the reason for this is because the NSX security model is independent from infrastructure. So we can apply the policy we want to the resource we want independently from its location just based on the function it will develop, which allows for a much more interesting security model for organizations. And this concludes this second video of the series. As a recap, we have just seen how powerful the NSX model is because it allows to have granularity and control even inside IP subnets. We can filter and decide which traffic we want inside an IP subnet. And we can do it in a very easy way because the NSX security model is independent from infrastructure. Again, thanks for watching, I hope you have found the demo interesting and don't forget to check my YouTube channel because this and all other videos of this series will be uploaded there. Thank you.